Goeiemorgen, good morning, Kiara. Ochend is nou een van die ochende wat ek eindelijk wil Afrikaans praat, maar ek gaan nou gedwing word om Engels te praat. So, Goeiemorgen, André, Sarel, Lijn, Vanita, good morning everybody. This is actually morning and I feel I should address the, the, the people in Afrikaans, but um, I'll stick to the English. This morning is one of those mornings where I'm not going to say all the best things for you, but probably some some stuff that you take to heart and probably make up your mind as, as to where your journey goes in New Zealand. Um, all right, let's start off this morning. I'm going to talk to you about the current crisis we're having worldwide, the, the, the current problems we're having with the coronavirus, problems we are having this uh, in New Zealand as well. So it's quite important that, that you take to heart what I'm telling you. Um, I'm not giving you financial advice this morning. Um, neither am I giving you any investment advice or immigration advice. I'm going to tell you as it is so you can make up your mind. So hi to a lot of other people, David, Andre. Um, yeah, I don't have a mask on. I actually thought about starting this morning for the mask, but <laughs> yep. Leanne, Saul, Carl, good morning. All right, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, I've, I've scoured the the financial markets this morning and I see a uh, one single green one Canada Canada S&P 60 is up by 2.91 percent so that's not um that's not good news but I, I don't know why they are up by 2.1 2.91 percent but they are up the rest of the world is down the rest of the world is Hectically down the Dow Jones 9%, S&P 500, which is one of the major ones, 8%. The Brazilian has taken knock 14%, um, Santiago 10%. Europe has been hard hit as well, um, <clears throat> FTSE 100, 4%. Euro net 4, CAC 43, the DAX at 5.5. Down here at, at local level, um, it hasn't hasn't gone any better to be quite frank around that on the side we, we're down to about six between three and six percent overall between asia um australia new zealand all over like that so on the flip side um why would the falling stock markets be a problem for you guys back in south africa except that the south african um I've, I've seen that, uh, I think it was on Tuesday, the JSC took a knock of 1 trillion rand. So that was quite a hectic knock as well. And and everything is down worldwide. But but why would this really impact you as a South African, as a job seeker? So this this is what I want to try and tell you this morning. I want to try and get that message over to you. We've spoken to quite a few businesses down here. Um, businesses on their back, on their back foot. They're, they're, they're quite afraid. They... They are in fear of this morning of not being able to continue with their work. Um, their, their biggest fear is that the Chinese market won't restart. So this is this is quite hectic. New Zealand is is really tied down by the Chinese market, as the rest of the world are. That's why the rest of the world is looking like it's looking. We are tied down, and, and our exports go to China. Our imports come from China. Uh, wood has been piling up in this docks um, in Tauranga like crazy. I, I see there's some ships coming in now, slowly but surely ships are coming in now to pick up the wood, but they have been piling this up like crazy. So it looks like the, the few ships that are here that's busy loading wood is probably the first time that they are starting to load wood again. So has it been picked up? I don't know. So how long will this last? I don't know. But this is impacting New Zealand in the, far, in the, in the following ways. People are afraid to, to take on new employers or employment. Um, but they don't have jobs out there. They, they do have the jobs. They're just saying, whoa, hang on, hang on. The, the other problem is New Zealand government has imposed a 14-day uh, self-isolation. So when you arrive here, you have to go into 14 days. It's not a thing like uh, anywhere else in the world. We say, oh, I'm not going to do it. The police are checking you up now. So they've deported two people um, yesterday or today they are going to deport them. But I know they've been picked up and are waiting for deportation because they did not go into self-isolation. This, this is a hectic thing. If you get deported out of New Zealand, I'm not going to go into the immigration side of this. There's quite a few years where you are, before you are even allowed back in. So you do not want to come here 
go to all these jobs um, or, or interviews and then get thrown out of the country because then you will probably in your lifetime not be able to come back again. Um, that's how hectic this is. The other side around, with me at current, there's a young fitter and turner staying and he's been making interviews all over. He's been here for about a month now. He's going back on the weekend. And on I think it was a Monday appointment that I had was, was postponed because they did not know uh, when he arrived and they were afraid of the virus. So people are cutting interviews now left, right and centre because they do not know what your status are. So if you arrive and you've got interviews that you probably aren't going to see the people. You're going to waste your time now coming to New Zealand. And I don't want to sound like the Tani with a nut brook, but really you have to keep all of this this in in, in, in your mind when, when you arrive here. 14 days will be lost, point one, totally lost. Um, employers aren't just going to interview you now because they are afraid of who you are or where you come from. Uh, point three, you, your interview, even if you get this interview, and if you, even if you get to do the interview, you probably won't be uh, accepted, you won't receive a job offer, barely on the fact that people are hesitant in this market. This current market is still down. It, it's, it's no way that it has turned, it's no way, even though I see a few ships coming in, it doesn't mean the whole world is turned around. The, the, the current market is down and, and people are afraid on the, on the floor. Um, I've spoken to a few employers as well this, this past week and they say they're trying to keep on people. They're even trying to, to, to go from 45 hours to 35 hours just to keep their staff in there. But this could also mean that if you are currently employed in New Zealand, you could probably earn a bit less for a period of time. So keep this in mind as well. So, so, so start, start doing the sums in your head. How much can I survive on if I'm currently, if they, if they cut my hours? They're not, they're not going to, um, to, to, to just fire people left, right and centre. I'll tell you why now. I'll tell you why now. There's, 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 a, there's a brilliant uh, lining to every silver cloud. It's just, what is it? Silver lining to every cloud or something like that. You can see I haven't written the English test. So. The, the, the silver lining down here is what New Zealand is really doing. I know governments all over the world um, is telling people what they are going to do and what they think they can do and will do and so on. But what is New Zealand really doing? New Zealand has made the following amount of money available. They've made, and sorry, I'm going to read from the piece of paper because it's, I don't want to sound like <laughs> your ex-president. <laughs> New Zealand has made available $235 million to spend on health immediately. That's, that money's available. It's, it's going to be spent on, on health immediately. Um, it's including increasing testing and contact tracing and increasing GPs and hospitals capaci capacity to see more sick people. A further New Zealand 255 million is set aside for future health needs, including extra medicines, flu vaccines, face masks, and other protective measures. Now, this is an amount of over 500 million dollars that they are going to use just for the medical or for the health side. Then they've put down 5.1 billion New Zealand dollars in wage subsidies for affected businesses in all sectors and regions available from yesterday. It's not like they're saying, oh, we are going to do this whenever, blah, blah, blah. The whole thought here is if, if you are the employer and you have to get lesser hours, once you drop, I think it's below 80%, then this will kick in. You have, the, the, as the, the business owner, just have to prove that last year versus this year, the same month that the, the business is down. And that's the reason is uh, the coronavirus. So... Um, then that money will be available for them to pay the um, their staff as well. So big, big, um, big emphasis here on, on keeping the staff. Big emphasis on on keeping the guys' um, cash flow up and running. Uh, big emphasis on on keeping the economy, even if it's, if it's idling, just to keep the economy going or ticking over. So then there comes a 2.8 billion income support package for seniors and low income families including a permanent $25 per week benefit increase and a doubling of the winter energy payment of for 220 um, if you are if you got a gold card in in new zealand over things over 60 get the gold card get discounts on basically everything can travel for quite for free on all the buses i think going to for free for all the swimming pools so that's why the swimming pools are blocked by the older people during the daytimes then um, they've also made available 126 million New Zealand dollars for people 
who are down with uh, Corona leave or on self-isolation support. $126 million available for that. Then they've also arranged $2.8 billion in business tax changes to free up cash flow. And they've also added $600 million for initial aviation support package. Yep, they're bailing out um, aviation here. Yeah? They're not bailing it out or putting it in their own pockets. So $600 million going to aviation. Um, Air New Zealand has been hardy, to be quite frank. I've heard they are closing down 85% of their overseas um, uh, routes and then locally they the people that's working here um, is going to be redistributed and taken up by a different company uh, different aviation company as well so let's see there's a few questions coming down here um, all right Natasha asking when you believe it will be lifted um, Natasha I think I think this will be lifted as soon as China um, restarts their economy the, the Chinese economy is very near to that point now. They've, I think they've, they've reached the tipping point of, of um, or the point of no return. I think they, if you look at the deaths and, and the new cases in China, it's all every day becoming less and less and less. And very soon they will open up their, um, I won't say they will open up their borders, but they will, they will open up their factories. And as soon as that happens, and this, this can't go on that long. And as soon as that happens, the rest of the world will start uh, lifting as well. It will not be an overnight process. So be quite frank about that. If you have a Kiwi Saver a retirement annuity in South Africa, investments everywhere, except in the bank, you would probably have seen that your stuff is down. Um, and that will stay down until the the whole world economy has, has, um, has restarted itself. It needs a restart. It's like a hard button restart on, on a computer. The economy has ground. To, to zero all over. Um, I just read this morning that uh, BMW in South Africa is closing down their plant. They are receiving 70, uh, they, they, the BMW parts comes from 70 different countries in the world and along the supply line, line um, stuff hasn't happened and so they're closing down the plant for a period of time. It's not forever, it's for a period of time. This, this whole thing is not forever, it's for a period of time. And if you look back and, and look at, at other crises we had throughout the, throughout the years, the, the uh, housing crisis bubble was one of the bigger ones that you probably will all remember. Something was fundamentally wrong with the economies of that country. Um, the last one, or the, or the housing crisis bubble that burst in America, that was the way that they borrowed out money to people. That was fundamentally wrong. That's why the whole thing popped. In, in New Zealand, in China, in South Africa, or well, let's take South Africa out of this equation, in America and so on, all the big companies is the same big company that it was three weeks, three months, three years ago. Nothing has gone fundamentally wrong with it. Let, let's, be, let's be frank on that. Um, it's exactly the same company. The, the sentiment in the world is to be or, or was to sell everything, to sell everything. So. Uh, and, and that is what drove the stock market down. People got afraid of, of the stock market. They just said, let's sell everything off. People are, are rebuying at the bottom. Um, where the bottom is, I don't know. So I'm slowly but surely as well rebuying some stocks. My stocks are just down. So it's one of those things. Um, but I can tell you I was down 18% on Monday. I'm down 8% today. So you can see 10% growth somewhere in those sectors. I'm, I'm widely... In, in, in a wide different amount of stocks so um it just that, that's just my passion that's one of those things that i that i'm i love doing so i keep my eyes on, on where the stock market is but except now that the canadians the rest of the world is still in the red um those fundamental companies let, let's take a company like coca-cola what has happened to coca-cola has they gone down um i can promise you you can have a look at coke they are also down um, coke is down. Uh, why would coke go down? Did they sell bad cokes? Did something bad happen? Have they sold less cokes? Are they going bankrupt? All of those answers are no. Nothing wrong with coke. The, the sentiment in the market was we are afraid of stocks at the current stage. We are selling off. So that is that is the one reason, the big reason. Um, if, if I look at, at companies, um, you can take your South African macro. You can take our pack and save countdown wherever they've been sold out i mean these companies have, have 
have never sold this large amount of stuff ever in their lives and their share prices is down. It's nothing wrong with the company. It comes back to market sentiment. So keep this in mind going forward. Market sentiment is a big problem and we don't know when market sentiment is going to change for us. So as soon as we've got that and as soon as China comes back online, market sentiment will start to say, well, we need to buy some of these stocks because we are now at a very good price. We are 25% down on some of these stocks. Um, there's some of the stocks that's 50% down, but um, probably not the best businesses to buy back in as soon as yet, especially ex um, especially the travel sector. The travel sector has been very hard hit. Um, in Tauranga, they've, they've closed off all the... Um, all the cruise ships coming into port so there's about another 16 um ships that were supposed to arrive here for our season because we've got to, we don't touch cruise ships throughout the year we've got a, a, a cruise ship season and then they after they stop it for the winter period and then in summertime the cruise ships come back but 16 cruise ships if you take 16 cruise ships just take 3,000 people just take 10 dollars buying power per person you're sitting with a heck of a loss there and that's the the, the real loss for tauranga um, the last empty cruise ships, there was two lying in our docks here for uh, since Sunday, but they were empty. The last two ones, um, I've heard, has left the port yesterday, sailing back to wherever they're going to be waiting out in this problem. Um, for the cruise liners, except if they have got a heck of a lot of backup money, this could be a very trying times. So keep that in mind. Um, if you do have a job and you can see that the amount of work coming into the company is getting less, and you're still getting paid the same amount of money. You got to go back to the boss and say, for, say to him, "Thank you, man. Thank you," because they they are really now delving into the cash. They, they're delving into the overdrafts, probably, and so on. All right, Mariska Rasmus saying, "I had my man to contract the about for visas. They can they can pull back their contracts. Like they can. Don't be uh, don't be angry if it does happen. I'm not saying it's it is going to happen, but it can happen. Keep that in mind." If they can be at the stage where they say we are not going to employ new people until everything else is, is or until the whole coronavirus story has, has um, blown over. But it could also be that you've got one of those type of jobs where they really need you and they, they have a big, um, big gap without you being there. So that could be the reason why they would employ you now. But your, your normal people, um, guys, if, if you take a two, two month step back, I think you well in it there. Um, I also want to tell people who want to come over looking for jobs, guys, I, I don't know if you're going to be successful. Even on our own side, we've decided to stop our candidates going forward just for a period of time until we know we can be successful with them again. Because I'm not here trying to get people to be not successful. For me, I want to have people that is successful and I'm, I'm so glad that Doe did find a job back in Auckland. So um, one less guy that I need to worry about, but on the other candidates, we're just taking a breather and just saying, let's just hang in there. Um, as soon as the, the, the virus blows over, we will get back to our candidates and start um, going hard again. So, and Vanita also coming there with saying, yes, your employment contracts can be pulled. Um, guys, if, if they pull your employment contract, that is an emergency measure. It's not that they don't like that they don't like you or they don't like South Africans. It's an emergency measure. And I think at current stage is a lot of companies need to do emergency measures. If you look at um, cash flow and those type of things, it's important that they that they take a step back and, and have a look at the whole company and say, Where, what are we going to do for the next six months? That, that is my my time frame, frame, what I would have looked at if, if I've got a company that employed a lot of people and that are where a lot of people is looking up to me to pay their salary weekly. Um, the salary bill in New Zealand is probably one of the biggest expenses that companies do have. So um, people are paid well here. Uh, it's not a, a question of of they they being paid on on, on, on the bread line and it's easy for the, the for the owner just to close down. It's not that easy to to fire people in New Zealand. It's it's quite difficult, but they can pull contracts left, right, and centre if it needs to be. If that is the way to survive that business, um, and just keep touch of those those companies if. Two, two months down the line, three months down the line, you don't know. It could be that the coronavirus has seen the end, the end in China and that it's really the, the, the positive increases I see in China that is really pulled through and, and, and runs well. Um, my worry still is what will happen in the States. The States are another big uh, 
a big importer um, of New Zealand goods as well as a, like, we import some stuff from them as well. So that's another big country that, that worries me a bit. Um, coronavirus has only now started down there and I can see it's quite running through there. It's all depending on, on, on what's happening in the States, but, but that will be the, the, the one to watch still. Um, what will happen in Africa? I don't know. I think um, if this really runs through Africa, it will run through Africa like crazy. But will Africa economy going down really, um, really be bad for the rest of the world? I doubt if the rest of the world will go down with the African economy if the African economy goes down like they did with the Chinese economy. There's just no, I really can't see that the African economy has got any, any real um, throwback towards us. Um, on, the, on the good side is gold has gone up through the roof. I see um, I actually was watching something else that said gold has gone up by something like 10% or so, which is quite, that's quite hectic. So gold has been doing good and Africa is a, a good exporter of gold. So that could probably be their saving grace. But um, on the medical side in Africa, uh, I'm not even going to go there. Let's not, okay, let's not go there. On, on the USA side um, of the medical side, will America win the battle against Corona? I do believe so. And as soon as they've done that, um, they will also be back online. I know that Donald has closed down. Uh, a lot of travel restrictions on there which is a good thing as well i think actually new zealand should have done a lot of more travel restrictions i actually feel new zealand should have closed the borders two weeks ago that's quite frank and i know this may sound hectic to everybody out there but we are a small island and we went from zero cases to 20 cases and how far, how far can we go with this and i know a lot of people is making corona off as just another flu or something like that but corona has proven to be a bit more than a flu so the amount of people dying of corona versus those getting infected on uh, and you take that same amount of people dying from a flu versus the amount of people that gets infected it's a big difference on there the coronavirus mortality in in, in italy looks to stand about at nine percent now um, the chinese turned around at about 3.5 percent of the of the mortality rate so that means people dying after they get um, after they got the, the illness there is a bit of a tug of war between uh, Germany and the USA current on um, where they are going to do the trials for the coronavirus because it's got to be on human trials before they pump it out to the rest of the world. And I've also heard that people say um, the coronavirus is due to the 5G uh, towers being set up there. I've heard that uh, people are saying that the coronavirus and the new vaccine that will come out for the coronavirus is the same thing. So you'll get the, you'll get the coronavirus from the vaccine. So. How far these people are correct, I don't know, and where the sources come from, I don't know. So that's probably not um, an area I really want to venture in there. Big question still remains. When, when will the New Zealand economy come right? Um, I think the New Zealand economy will be taking about f four weeks, I would say four to six weeks after the Chinese economy is back online. The Chinese economy need to start um, start producing again for us to be able to export again for us to be up and running again how long will the stock markets take to come right um, I don't know I don't know this is the one thing uh, I saw somebody ask somebody about the visas but it has gone past me now because I can only see a small part of what you guys are talking about there um, on the visa side, uh, my kids were supposed to be here next month early. Um, the first batch of them and the rest coming late in the, in the year and the, or later the month. And then at the end of that month, um, Elzan, who's currently with us, her parents was coming over as well. All those tickets um, has been cancelled by us. So we've said no and come currently. Um, I mean, as a father, that's a bit of a, a knock on the head if your kids can't come. And it's not their fault or my fault. So I just think it's the best for all of them not to come at current stage. Even on, on our travel insurance that we are selling, we're seeing so many people just saying, guys, we're not coming anymore. So many people. I, I think of all the travel insurance that we are currently have on our books, or that was supposed to go in force now, none of them has been accepted. So nobody's even traveling from here to South Africa. That is, that is how hectic it is out there. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, do not try and can come over and take a chance of not self-isolating. If, if you are coming over now, and you do not self-isolate, you could probably never ever be allowed back into New Zealand. Um, they, they're very, very heavy on this. So let's see. Uh, 
Cornelia asking, is it best to wait and start if everything is settled? My advice would be to you to do that. Wait, wait until you see the whole world calming down, then you come over. And the other side is the, the interviews that have been postponed or stopped. Those owners of businesses are afraid that you would come in and make their people sick because they still have got a business to run. Even if it's, it's not going as good as it did a month or two ago, they still got a business to run. So interviews, I doubt if people will have any interviews face to face anymore. That is for the next foreseeable future. I think that's one of the ways that people will say, well, you're not going to have interviews face to face. So. Um, Hank Kruger saying businesses have closed their doors for visitors. A lot of meetings have been cancelled. Hank, you are so right. Um, I had some training to do, which is quite important for our industry, and we were booked three full days. And it has come down uh, that two of the people that were supposed to be in the training came back from somewhere and they showed some symptoms of a virus or the coronavirus. I'm not quite 100% sure what symptoms they showed. But all that training has been cancelled. Everything. We were supposed to have a different companies training as well later this week or later this, this month in, in Taranga. Uh, actually look much forward to that training, but all has been stopped. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where, where this will lead to and if we are going to do training on the, over the internet. So, it's one of those things. Uh, guys and girls, but that's that. I can promise you all the companies are still alive and kicking so far. Um, it could be that some of the companies go down. Um, I, I actually don't want to say that, but let's touch wood, where's wood, there's wood. Uh, touch wood that none of the companies go down with the coronavirus because of people's fears, not um, wanting to buy any shares anymore of bigger companies, because New Zealand has got a lot of smaller companies dependent on bigger companies and a bigger overseas market. So we, we are in a bit of a catch-22 situation. If, if the rest of the world stop, we grind to total halt. That is one of those things. So, but keep keep um, keep good good thoughts out there. Um, we'll restart our candidate program as soon as everything else is is, is passed. We will um, we will keep you up to date here. Uh, actually, Vanita has said that she wanted to speak to us next week on the coronavirus and more about jobs and the immigration process. So, thanks for Vanita for um, for putting your hand up and helping us in, out and us out in this uh, difficult times down here. Guys and girls, that's this, our time this morning has come and gone like like the virus. So let's hope the virus comes and gone as quickly as our time has come and gone this morning. So if, you, if you're in South Africa and thinking about coming, I think postponing for two months at least will be a good thing. Uh, but flights, uh, places like Qantas, I don't know about the rest of the stuff, but, but, but places like Qantas and these guys, are willing to either give you money back plus charge you a fee for that for giving your own money back or to keep your um, keep your flights for you if you just you just need to let them know things by the end of the month um, I'll ask Mariska uh, our travel advisor just to give us a bit of a buzz on that uh, we've been working hard with her for the past three days regarding that and I know she helped a lot of people who didn't even take tickets through her to to be that way as well so um, well, no, let me put it out there. Thanks, Mariska, for all your hard work that you have done for people that are on flights or coming to New Zealand or would have flown soon, even if they haven't booked through you. I mean, going above and beyond um, and not telling them just to stuff off and go somewhere else or go back to wherever they bought the tickets. So, um, good, good on her for that. So, yeah, guys and girls, the sun is shining up. The sun is shining up here in, in Welcome Bay. Um, my name is Jan Fulgun. Thanks for listening to me this morning. And remember, if you need anything, uh, any of your um, life covers with us will still be paid out if you do contract the, the COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus. So yeah, sorry the, the news wasn't that good this morning. Um, but partly to blame China for that. So let's blame somebody else. It's an African thing. Let's blame somebody else. Okay. To the guys staying in South Africa, I think uh, to stay safe would be a good thing out there. Um, I don't know if the, the medical in South Africa can really handle a problem like this. Um, I even think New Zealand's medical will be highly taxed if it if the amount of cases goes up to be more than this. Okay, guys and girls, that's me. I'm out. We had a half an hour. So you probably all would want to go and watch Sea on the Lawn. And the South Africans down here in New Zealand would want to go to work. So that's me. See you all. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Thank you. Bye.